Hey everybody, it's Brad again uh, with another video on Masterworks 3 for you. Um, today I'm going to talk about something called pull compensation. And what pull compensation does is help to alleviate the problem of uh, outlines and uh, fills that are next to each other not lining up and leaving a gap so you can see the fabric below uh, between them. Um, this is caused by having um, a relatively dense design that pulls the fabric enough that it stretches it and when the next area goes to sew out the fabrics not in the place that it's expected to be which leaves a gap um, but there is a setting that you can go in and set called pull compensation so uh, on a design that you're digitizing yourself you can tell it to compensate for that um, so I'm going to show you how to set the pull compensation. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go up into my artwork here and just pull up a, a regular rectangle. Now for your own work what you would be doing is drawing in whatever shapes you know you're, you're trying to digitize. I'm just going to use two rectangles to illustrate the way the pull compensation works though. So I'm going to left click on the rectangle here and I'm just going to draw a randomly sized rectangle. Um, and I'm going to apply stitches. I'm going to apply a standard fill. Okay. Then I'm going to uh, draw another rectangle and I want it to be right next to my first one. Okay. And I'm going to apply a standard fill to that also and I'll make it a different color so we can see the difference. I'm going to go ahead and zoom way in. All right, and I've got a little bit of gap there, so I'm going to just move the stitches over a little bit. Just left clicked and dragged there. Okay, so now these are totally lined up right next to one another. But if I were to sew this out, you know, these two rectangles out, um, this is a dense enough design that it would probably leave a gap between them because of the lack of pull compensation. Um, so the way you set your pull compensation, I'm going to select the area that I want to work on. And in fact, I want both areas in this case to have the same pull compensation set. So I'm going to uh, click and drag a box around both of these. So they're both highlighted. You could also hit Control A, would do the same thing, would select all. Um, but if you want just you know, one or two of the elements selected. You could, you know, see, hold down control and left click on them in the sequence view would work. Um, you know, maybe I want to apply this to just these two. Maybe there's other elements in the design um, that I don't want all of them selected. Anyway, you select the elements that you want to work on. And then you look in your properties menu and the fourth tab over in your properties menu is pull comp. And we're going to left click on pull comp. Uh, and in here is where you would set your pull compensation. Now you have uh, two different types of pull compensation. You've got absolute and percentage. I'm going to teach you to use the absolute value and what this is going to do is set um, an absolute value, an, a numerical number, not a percentage of the size of the design. Um, it's going to compensate for X amount of millimeters of pull. Um, and uh, this is just the way that I was taught. I've never used percentage before, so you can experiment with that if you want. Um, I just, I haven't used it, so I don't know what to tell you how to do with it. Um, now, under the absolute value, what this is going to be is the amount that it's going to pull out, out my stitches um, from where my lines are. Uh, and I have found that the setting that is normally used for t-shirts works for most things and doesn't mess up on an area where it might not have needed it. Um, so I just generally, if I'm going to use pull compensation, I use the setting that's I was told is good for t-shirts, which is an absolute value of 0.4. So if you go in and type in 0.4 into your absolute value here, and hit apply and now watch when I hit apply watch what happens here I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that we can see it better uh, let's zoom just a bit here alright now I'm gonna hit apply and watch what happens 
Now it's subtle, but it actually pulled out the left and right of both of these fills slightly, so they're overlapping a little bit. Uh, I'm going to turn the 3D off here and zoom way in. Uh, zoom way in. All right, so you can see that the stitches are ever so slightly overlapped in here. And they weren't before. So I'm going to undo just so you see what it was like before. Undo. See how they're not quite touching? And then hit apply. I'll go back to pull compensation, set it to 0.4 again, and watch the difference here on this view. Boom. See how it pulled those out and now they're touching? They're actually slightly overlapping. That's how you adjust your pull compensation. And like I said, I, I generally use an absolute value of 0.4. Um, you know, your mileage, of course, may vary. You can experiment with different settings on different types of materials. I found that 0.4 works on just about everything, though. Um, everything I've tried, anyway. Sweatshirts. I generally, if I'm going to embroider, I embroider on hoodies um, and, uh, uh, like, PK-type golf shirts, and it works great for that. I know that. Um, uh, also on... Uh, well, fleece, I already pretty much said, uh, but felt, you know, d different types of material that I've tried, I, I use a point four, like I said, so you can kind of play with it yourself. Now, the other thing you can do to get an idea for what the setting might be for a different type of material uh, is, as I said, um, this was the setting for t-shirts. If you go in, I'm going to hit the recipe button up here on the upper left hand area little chef hat button hit the chef hat button and choose a recipe um, okay well I, I told you t-shirt it's gonna set it to point four if I go in uh, let's say jeans and say okay I'll just bring in a square or a rectangle here apply a fill to it now that recipe has preset my pull compensation look it's preset it to point two so that's the appropriate setting for jeans. Now, another, you know, two tenths of a millimeter isn't going to hurt anything. So if I had set it to 0.4, then that would have been fine. It just would be a little more overlap than I might have needed. Uh, but as you can see, you can actually use the recipes to see what the appropriate absolute value setting is uh, for whatever type of material you're sewing on. So um, that's just something else you can do. So anyway, that's... That's how you set pull compensations, um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.